Grace Novamon, one of my favorite Digimon, a DNA Digivolution of the Dawn and Dusk Box Digimon, but they're also members of the Olympos 12, meaning there are 10 more Digimon in that group that just don't have DNA Digivolutions. And with the next Digimon story game focusing on the Olympos 12, it's not impossible we might see those DNA Digivolutions one day. But I'm done waiting for Bandai Namco to make my dreams a reality. So today, with some of the best artists in the Digimon world, we've DNA Digivolved all of the Olympos 12. Thank you to ZDK and Jmon, as well as my art bringers Tarapin G Dub and Mickey D343 for making this possible. You can join them over on patreon.com forward slash carnex for tons of rewards and to directly pay for custom art videos. And our first Olympos 12 pairing will be Volcanismon and Mercurymon. For each of these, I tried to find a Roman or Greek, the two pantheons that inspired the Olympos 12, two very similar pantheons. Roman myth basically using Greek myth's homework and trying not to look like it copied it. Using that to find a reason to pair each of them up. So some more obvious ones later in the video also have Digimon lore connections, but for Volcanismon and Mercurymon, frankly, they were just the last two I couldn't pair up. <laughs> Hephaestus, the Greek equivalent of Volcanus, made Hermes, the Greek equivalent of Mercury's, sandals and mirrored shield, so they at least interacted in mythology, but yeah, it's the loosest connection of the bunch. However, Weirdomon stepped in to make that connection feel fantastic, DNA digivolving them to become Forgemon. I didn't feel the need to make every DNA digivolution in this video's namesake mythology based, as Grace Novamon's name more so refers to Star and the grace of God, potentially. So Forgemon in this instance just gets its name from the fact that it's a god of the forge. Weirdomon was inspired by the Libra Gold Saint from Saint Seiya, who is the guardian of the holy weapons, which felt like a natural fit of the combination of the weapons maker Volcanismon and the beastly Mercurymon. There's some lovely details here, and I love how zen this Digimon feels. So Forgemon is the ultimate god of the forge, a heavenly god Digimon that sits among the stars, forging anything it can imagine from the liquid Mercury-like metal that courses through its body. It is also said to be as incredibly intelligent as it is fast on its feet. The second this Forge Master stands up, it could cross entire continents in the blink of an eye. Stay alert, or its hypersonic barrage of lava hot weapons will destroy you. And our next pair is Venusmon and Marsmon. Apparently, in Greek and Roman myth, Venus married Vulcan, but cheated on him a lot with Mars, probably actually loving Mars, not Vulcan. Plus, Venus produced no children with Vulcan in Roman myth, so Mars as her lover feels more appropriate for the DNA digivolution. They did produce kids. HLR took these two lovers and DNA digivolved them to Harmoniamon, because one of Aphrodite and Ares, aka Venus and Mars, kids is named Harmonia. But HLR also thought it worked as a balance between love and war. In this, Venusmon very much leads the DNA digivolution with Marsmon, using Marsmon's combat prowess and Venusmon's beauty to become a great war commander goddess. HLR also liked how Wonder Woman says love triumphs over war in her movies, which is why Harmoniamon has some Amazon inspiration too. You'll notice Harmoniamon has two fire dolphins either the side of her. These combine the fires of Mars and that dolphins are the symbols of Venus. These digital companions are called Phobos and Deimos, named for the Greek personified spirits of fear, while her two spears that can pierce anything are called Eros and Anteros. In Greek myth, Eros and Anteros were two brothers. Eros used to cause people to fall in love, whereas Anteros, the antithesis of Eros, would cause misfortune to those who spurned or refused the love of others. And all of these are the names of kids of Venus and Mars, so that works out great. Harmoniamon is a powerful god Digimon a true warrior queen and commander of vicious armies. None who cross her path can deny her beauty, but those who would turn against her love will be swiftly dealt with by her divine discipline. Next, we connected Minervamon and Bacchusmon. I will admit largely because Minerva and Bacchus are siblings in their mythology, plus both these Digimon have a snake-like appearance. I will acknowledge that Bacchusmon's reference book listing does make mention of a connection to Cerismon, which we did consider, but ultimately didn't think Bacchusmon and Cerismon would produce a cohesive DNA digivolution. You can totally fight me on this one in the comments, but if you want to see a Bacchusmon and Sarismon DNA Digivolution in future, you could commission an artist yourself or help contribute to a part two of this video. <laughs> All that said, Nantins took the two snakes to produce Serpentmon, named for the constellation Serpents, the Serpent. It felt appropriate that an ally to Grace Novamon would have a similarly celestial name. Nantins was inspired by the fact Minervamon seems to be in costume in a way, with the snake helmet being a key point to that end. So Nantins wanted to combine that idea with the existing body and the optical illusion that Bacchus 
Mon has of appearing to have another face. This manifests, as you can see, with this obvious snake woman design, but on her hair, you can see the purple and gold details form snake eyes, and on her <clears throat> bodice and waist are a top set and bottom set of fangs, overall forming the face of a snake. February was also carnival month in Nantin's country, and to quote, I found a lot of inspiration from that to combine the two. Carnival is an event where it's very common to use animals as costumes, so I was very inspired to mix that with Digimon, and I think it came together very well. Minervamon and Bacchusmon, while similar, are also very different, so I really love how Serpentmon came together. Serpentmon is a much-loved warrior god Digimon, but also a party animal, famed for the drinking it inherited from Bacchusmon. Serpentmon loves to party, and can even produce its own alcohol. However, if you imbibe too much of this, it can kill you. When this Digimon is in a bad mood, usually from a hangover, if you get on its wrong side, it unleashes a fevered barrage of blows with its upgraded Olympia Max Sword, known as the Snake Strike Roll. Next, I paired up Neptune Mon and Ceres Mon. Neptune and Ceres have some fun connections, the two regularly bumped uglies producing offspring. This is what inspired Next Digimon to bring them together to create Arian Mon. Next Digimon, similarly to HLR and Harmonia Mon, had the idea to use some of the children of Neptune and Ceres as a base. And funnily, one of their children is a, yes, a horse named Arian. Arian's twin sister is a human goddess of winter and frost, which Next Digimon thought was too far from the core concept Ceres Mon and Neptune Mon have, so she went with Arian. To connect the nature theme of Ceres Mon and the sea theme of Neptune Mon, Arian Mon is in the shape of a leafy sea dragon that are literally connected to sea horses, a nice merging of ideas there. Even if Ceres Mon I know is a bird, its overall design is a seahorse, a leafy sea dragon, but also it can fly like a bird. Arian Mon is a god of the sea and land, capable of propelling itself so swiftly through the ocean, it can also glide through the air for days at a time. The seawater coursing through its body produces incredibly rare flowers that bear fruit on its body. These fruits are so delicious it can bring joy to any that sample it. It's also a fantastic warrior though, that bears hatred to all that would damage the earth and pollute the seas. Stand back, its forest of Atlantis takes no prisoners. And that brings us to Junomon and Jupitermon, a natural DNA digivolution pair as they are said to be lovers in their Digimon reference book listings, which reflects their Roman and Greek mythology basis also being lovers. So Rubix came aboard to fuse them into Balonamon, taking inspiration again from a offspring of these two gods, Balona, who is a sort of war goddess. Junomon's animal is the peacock, and Jupitermon's is the owl, so Rubix fused those elements together, which is what informed the owl-like helmet and peacock-like winged cape of this supreme god Digimon. I think Rubix has nailed the brief here, combining the two gods into something that feels appropriate and powerful, a true god of gods. I did consider the idea of also doing a hysteric slash wrath mode based version of Balonamon, however I took cues from Grace Novamon on this. If it's supposed to be the true fusing of Dianamon and Apollomon, that's likely why we've never seen a Grace Novamon whispered mode like Apollomon got whispered mode in Cross Wars. So for Balonamon, the same is true. The wrath and hysteria of the gods has been purged, leaving only a confident and honourable warrior god. Sitting high on its throne in the Iliad server, Balonamon aligns itself with the other DNA digivolutions of its Olympos 12 brethren to protect the Iliad server and beyond. It is said only one Digimon could stand a chance at defeating the powerful fused god, but due to the strength of its bonds with the other Olympos 12 Digimon, this day surely will never come. Its signature move is the Divine Lightning Rod. But every time I make an Olympos 12 video, people go, what about Tyamon? What about Plutamon? It's called the Olympos 12, not the Olympos 14. Plutamon and Titamon are not members. They're associated with the Olympos 12, right? They're enemies, okay? But they're not official members, so when we do Olympos 12 videos, I think we can establish that they're not members, so let's move on. Oh, but we are gonna DNA Digivolve them anyway. <laughs> Balonamon needs an enemy, right? So Adriano Davino is here. By the way, please go make sure you check out Adriano Davino on Patreon as well. He's doing some great stuff over there. And he has DNA Digivolved the two enemies of the Olympos 12 to create Chronomon. Adriano was naturally inspired by Cronus, the Titan, and Cronus, the personification of time, and the god of many gods, the famous eater of his children, some of the gods that inspired the Olympos 12. Chronomon's sides are a reference to the Titan, and the sand are referencing time. I really think Adriano did a lovely job at merging Plutomon and Titan on here in a way that feels reminiscent of Omnimon and Chaosmon, but also a much more direct DNA digivolution like Imperialgermon Fighter Mode. Chronomon is an interdimensional being. It can see multiple timelines and probabilities and uses its eyes to assess every eventuality that would allow it to defeat the gods it swears vengeance on. The sheer amount of eyes also makes it an incredibly tough opponent as it is able to see a battle from many angles and react incredibly quickly when it is attacked. It can cut and obliterate timelines with its larger scythe and absorb it to grow stronger, allowing it more energy to 
defeat the gods of Olympos. These timelines are represented by lines of grains of sand. So when Chronomon absorbs the timelines, they create this wave of sand you can see on its scythe. The dark god of time. Determined to end the Olympos 12, Chronomon will end your timeline with its end bringing obliterator, using only one swing of its scythe. And that is it! All of our DNA digivolutions for the Olympos 12 and their enemy, Chronomon. Putting Grace Novamon alongside them, I love this new Olympos 12. An Olympos 6 plus Chronomon, I guess. <laughs> Go follow the artist and thanks to my art bringer and sovereign patrons, Tarapin, GW, MickeyD343, Jmon, and ZDK14 for making this video possible and you can join them over on patreon.com forward slash KhanEx. Please do do that if you are able to. I know a lot of people don't have the money. That's totally fine. Just liking, subscribing, leaving a comment also helps immensely. Thank you to my YouTube channel members who are absolutely holding it down. My Khan Club, my Tamers, and my Digi Destined. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time when we go to Jill. Bye-bye.